everyone, this is Paige here. In this video, I'm going to show you all about how to use tags and categories on your Squarespace website. I'll start by giving you a general guide to what tags and categories are if you're completely unfamiliar with them. I'll then go through how to mass um, merge and rename your tags and categories, how to use tags and categories to pull up a very specific and small amount of your information on your website, how to create a blog archive page with your tags and categories, and um, what to do if you hate your template blog template layout, how to use tags and categories to change completely the layout of your blog posts. If you're interested in just one specific topic out of all those, head to the description below and I'll put in jump to links so you can get straight to that area. So the first thing we need to get clear on is what exactly are tags and categories. They are basically a way to organize the content and information that you have on your Squarespace website. A category, as you can imagine, is a general topic of something. And then tags are a way to get more specific with whatever that is. So say you run a food blog. Maybe you want to organize all your blog posts by breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You want to organize them by the meals in the day. But then you want to get a little bit more specific and you maybe want to tag them by the ingredients that are in those different recipes. So say you could tag your blog post with avocado and then if someone clicks on the avocado tag, it takes them to all the blog posts that have been tagged with that specific thing. So categories are a bit more general and a bit broader and you want to keep them fairly minimal. Um, and then tags you can go crazy with and add as many as you feel like. Um, the tags and categories also help tell Google and Squarespace what your actual blog post is about. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to my Squarespace blog to show you all of the different ways you can use tags and categories in action. The first thing I'll show you is how to actually add a tag and a category to your blog posts. So you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner we have the tags and categories option. I'm going to click the plus button and then it will come up with all of the um, categories that I've already previously created. So this blog post is about Squarespace, so I'm going to label it Squarespace. If you want to create a new category, you just click create, type it in, and hit enter. For tags, um, I'm going to go ahead and name this post, uh, tag this post with tags because it's about tags. Um, so you just type in and then hit enter, um, and it will create your tag there. If you um, go to type in a tag that's previously been created, it'll give you that in a drop down, um, and you could just select the previous tag. So that is how you add tags to your blog posts. Now, say you want to modify the name of your tags or categories. Instead of going through and clicking the X button and deleting each one out, you can actually rename them. So to do that, click the Save button. Click on the gear icon of your blog to get to your settings. And then you'll click over to the Advanced tab. And then when you come down here, you can click on any tag or category. Say I want web design just to be design. Um, I go ahead, click on it, type design, and rename. Click confirm. And there we go. So now all of my posts that were previously tagged with web design are just tagged with design. So that's how you do it. You can also do the same thing in the tag section. It's the exact same. Um, so yeah, you can also merge multiple tags together. Um, give it a new name and click merge as well. There we go. I'm going to click save to get out of this. The next thing I'll do is show you how to actually use the tags and categories to pull up specific content um, and sort of leave out all the rest. So say um, I want to add a beginner's Squarespace page to my website um, with all my best blog posts just for beginners. Now I have a lot of blog posts on Squarespace um, some of them are more advanced though. So say I want people just to find my beginner posts, this is how I would do that. So I'd go back to the Pages tab, I'd scroll down to the Not Link section, click the plus button, and add a page. I'm going to name this page uh, Squarespace for Beginners. I'm going to use a blank page and click Start Editing. I will go ahead on the left hand side where my insert points are popping up, click an insert point, scroll down, now I want to use a summary block. Um, it's purely preference, like your own personal preference as to which one um, you think would look best. So I'm going to select the grid and then I have to tell Squarespace where do I want the content um, that's being pulled to come from. So I want this summary block to pull my blog content. 
So I'm going to select my blog. Now you'll notice these are all of my most recent blog posts, not necessarily my Squarespace beginner blog posts. So to specify it down even more, I would click over to display, and then I would scroll down to where it says add a category filter or a tag filter. So now I've tagged my beginner posts with beginner. So I'm going to go ahead and type in beginner and then click enter. So now it's pulling up not all of my blog posts, not my most recent blog posts, not all of my Squarespace blog posts, just the posts that are for Squarespace beginners. Now keep in mind you do need to tag posts before you actually go to do this. So say I hadn't tagged any of my posts with beginner before, if I typed in beginner it just wouldn't work. So you have to tag the blog post first or whatever content, your events or your galleries first, and then go to add in the summary block. Now I'm going to go ahead and style this. I use the layout and display tabs to actually style what this looks like. Uh, good, good, good. And keep in mind, a summary block can do up to 30 items. You can't go past 30. So I'm going to get this. I'm not sure. If I do, I'm going to put it up to 30. And then as I add more beginner blog posts to this, they'll automatically just add to this page here. Um, so currently I only have, it looks like, five post tags with beginner. But as I add to them and tag new posts with beginner, they'll just automatically populate here then. Um, good, good, good. Okay, and then I'm going to click apply and I'll name this page Squarespace for beginners. Okay, and another way I can use tags and categories I'll show you is um, to link to those tags and categories. So I'll click save out of here. Um, an example of a reason I might want to do this. Say in my navigation, instead of just having you click over to my blog, I want you to see all the categories of my blog in a drop-down navigation, um, and then for you to be able to get to them um, really quickly instead of having to go to the blog and then find what you want, just click through the drop-down. So to do that, I would add a folder. I'm gonna call this folder blog. And then add a page within the folder. Now instead of adding a page, I'm just gonna add a link. Um, and then my link, I'll name these all of my um, Squarespace posts. Click to add URL, click content, blog, choose category, yeah, select Squarespace. So now it automatically links to um, blog, question mark, category equals Squarespace. That's the indication that this link is going straight to all of my blog posts that are tagged with Squarespace. Um, I will click save. And then I can go ahead and do that with all of my other um, different categories that I have. So add page. Okay, and I'll quickly pull this into my navigation to show you what the difference is here. So I'm going to pull this up from my not linked section into my linked section. And here is the difference. The first one is my folder with my links to my different pages, and then the second one is my actual blog. So now I hover over and I can get to Squarespace, Blogging, Business, and my portfolio. If I just have my normal blog link, it just goes to the blog itself. So again, this is taking me to all the different sections and the categories automatically. This one is not. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all my Squarespace posts. And then as I scroll down, these are all of my Squarespace blog posts. Now you'll notice um, this here, the page setup is set up as um, my template determines it, and as I've set it up in the style editor. Um, the difference between this method and the method I showed you previously with a summary block is the summary block requires you to add a page. If I do it this way where I'm just linking to the category, it's not um, adding additional pages to my website. The benefit of that is say if I'm trying to stay on the personal plan without going to the business plan, 
um, and update my Squarespace plan so I pay more every month, um, I can just link to my tags and categories instead of actually having to add a new page and then add a summary block with that information. The benefit of the summary block option is that you have um, more customization options over the layout and the look of things. Okay, the next thing that I want to show you is what to do when you hate your blog layout, how we can use tags and categories to fix that problem. Um, so I'm going to create a new page here in the not linked section. Select page. Going to name it blog. Start editing. And then again, I'm going to use the summary block for this. So I'm going to click an insert point, select a summary block. Um, again, you can choose whichever summary block you feel looks best. Um, for this, I'm going to choose a list summary block. I'm going to select my blog. I want the information to come from my blog. I'm going to click over to layout and change the layout a little bit. Good, and then click over to display. So how you do this is, you'll notice that a summary block can only have a total of 30 posts in it. So say you are blogging often and you get to more than 30 blog posts, how exactly do you um, continue to have those be laid out? So what I've done is I've gone ahead and tagged um, my posts into batches. So I have my first section of 30 posts, that's post one to post 30, and I tagged it with the um, tag first. Then I would take the next 30 blog posts, so from 31 to 60, and I would tag them second. And then what I would do is go into my tag filter, so I want this to be all, everything in my first batch of posts. I tag first, and then all the first posts comes up. I click apply, and then I would go ahead when I've passed 30 posts and I've tagged 30 posts with the tag first, then I would add in another summary block, style it the exact same way, and then I would tag this with second. So that's all the second group, the second batch of posts, I guess you could say. And then I would tag this, I haven't actually created the second, but I would tag it with second and all of the posts that were in the second tag would then um, appear. Okay, and then to finish this off, I would save out of my page, scroll up to where my blog is. So you notice both of these pages are named blog. However, this one is just a regular page page, and this is a blog page, which means that I can click, and this is the area where I'm actually writing my blog posts. But say I don't like the look of how this lays out on my template, um, what I do is pull the blog blog down to the not linked section and then take my new page which has the summary blocks in it which then has the layout that I like and pull that up to my oops and pull that up to my linked section so that's the one that's actually appearing for people so you would continue to write your blog posts down here um, and you would tag them with your first and second tags and they would automatically populate up here. Once you say get to past 60 posts, then you just add another tag with the tag third and you um, have that whole batch of 30 posts tagged third and they will automatically populate as you publish them. And then the very last thing which I'm going to show you is how to make a blog archive page. So in order to do that, you'll go to your not link section, click new page, name it archive. Start editing. And now before this, I went through and tagged my posts with the month and the year. So what I wanna do is write in um, the current month and year. And then below it, I'm going to add in a summary block with all the posts from that month and year. So I want the content to pull from my blog, display, 
tag February 2017. And now you'll see all my posts that I wrote in 27, February 2017 are appearing here. And then below that, I would add in the previous month, so January 2017. And there we have it. So with every new month, you would just go into your archive page. I should probably name this archive. With every new month, you would go into your archive page and you just sort of um, have it from newest at the top to oldest at the bottom. So every month you would go in, you would add a new summary block, um, you would add in the title of the month and the year, um, and then over time this will just accumulate to hold all of your blog posts there. And then you would click save to finish that. And if you like that video, be sure to give it a thumbs up.